Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cougar City Gaming Podcast. Today, we are here sitting down with JPY, Jen, and Bob, as usual. Say hey, guys. Hello. And we are Hi. going to talk about the new dungeons in the new Necrom chapter. Um, so let's let's go ahead and start with you, JPY. How do you like the new dungeons? Uh, I think they're really fun. I uh, I like the design of them. Um, kind of like you know, especially Scrivener's like uh, hitting all the old max combined with some new max. Um, I think the the idea the goblins are really fun. Um, I like that it's a mechanic heavy. It's almost like that first boss is a tutorial to teach you how to use combat abilities like blocking, roll dodging, bashing, which is kind of cool. Um, definitely, uh, it's definitely very, very, very cool. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous, by the way, as well. So, I don't know. What, what about you, Jen? How do you like that? Yeah, Scrivengers is a lot of fun. I like mechanic heavy instances where it's not just like show up and burn and get it done as quick as possible i like dungeons that you know challenge you to complete the mechanic or else um so that's nice um i've only played so far in like organized groups we did have like maybe a pug or two so far and it's really um it can be it can be challenging if it's like a a group and like you're not communicating with what to do um so it's definitely easier on organized group um the traversing through like the different realms and spaces and everything like JPY said is is really gorgeous it's a lot of fun to get through there all right um the halls one is uh or, um Bolsonar is is really fun too for uh being a lot quicker and then with uh with pickup groups it can be you know you'll want to probably skip the puzzles because those are a bit of, like time wasters a little bit but it's okay because the buffs aren't so important. You don't need them to get through it. I haven't seen the hard mode yet, so I've, I've done both on Vet now, and it would be interesting to uh, to take a look at some of those hard modes. So, Bob, what what do you think of the new dungeons? Um, I really haven't. I've only seen people play them. I actually have not physically played them yet. Um, so I've, I've been a little uh, busy in real life and haven't gotten to it. Um, but you know, anything that, that brings people back to your basic command, uh, mechanics of, you know, like JP was saying the the block and the dodge and, and, uh, that's always good for the game, right? Yep, yep. Cause sometimes we forget, <laughs> we forget, <laughs> we just go, ah, yeah, we just need a hundred K DPS and we'll just, we'll just burn this thing. Right. Um, so I'm always happy when they do stuff like that. Um, but it does, you know, like Jen said, there, there are struggles uh, with um, pugging uh, when it comes to mechanics because not everybody is on the same level when it comes to that kind of stuff. So um, I'm I'm interested. I'm going to get into them this week and, and see what they're all about um, and try and get uh, some of these new sets. I know JP was super excited about the Rune Carver set. Um, and maybe, maybe he wants to talk about some of the testing he's done. I know he was mentioning it to me earlier, um, last or late late last night. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. JP, uh, tell us. Like, I know JP has been testing ring carvers with um, a couple of stuff this patch as soon as it's it came out. So kind of, it's kind of meh. Even with a bow, like in the most optimal dot setup, like eight dots on your bar, like necro, it's kind of it kind of feels. A little underwhelming. It's also broken on the dummy. Um, you have to math it. I mean, I can get like a average, a mediocre. Like, I don't know. I haven't I haven't played much with a bow, so I'm sure my parse is a little sloppy. But I mean, around like 105 or whatever. But uh, for me personally, which is like okay. I mean, it's a little lower than what I would be. But I also haven't played crow in a while, so that's not really a fair comparison. But like the in combat stuff, it feels a little underwhelming to be honest like i think it's more um it's very very niche like you know when it was evaluated by a lot of the pc players those are also like the the best of the best in the game with add-ons and all that stuff and uh i don't think it's going to be really i don't know the only advantage the really clear advantage i can see right now is like you don't really want too many like azura blights in the group mm -hmm. So, you know, potentially maybe stacking it with it is like a nice thing because it's not going to utilize the 
the blight dot or whatever, but um, I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed, actually. I'm a little sad. <laughs> to be fair. You think it's like, worth to stack it with a Zerblight and lose the Slayer set? I mean, if you needed that kind of cleave, maybe. It depends. Okay. I mean, that might make it a little... Give it a little bit of advantage, but... I mean, I honestly feel like Blight is better. <laughs> like, I don't know. I haven't tried it yet on a DK, but like I said, running a Crow, like the generic best mm -hmm. setup or whatever with... Uh, you know, like a master's bow for poison injection and hail and all that stuff. It just didn't feel. Well, maybe they'll they'll buff up the set a little bit in the future. Like now that everybody has kind of said, it's like, you know. Yeah, it's like you need a bunch of dots to really make that. Because I think the tooltip, even with like Thrashians on, it's about 1,300 extra damage every third tick. So it's okay if you have like a million dots running like a, like a or multiple adds. But it's just, it's so much work that it's just like, mm, I, I, and it being light armor as like some of the other like content creators have like said, it's just, I don't really think it's worth like at this time. I mean, it's kind of fun if you want like something different to mess around with, but I just, I don't know. I, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel satisfying. It, like watching a blight proc and just obliterate like stuff yeah kill everything is awesome. yeah, yeah it's, bob like, knows kind of like a, <laughs> yeah no it doesn't feel as it's just it's it's, a, it's underwhelming i'm kind of disappointed like i think it was a little bit of an oversell or a stretch by like some other content creators to say well this is situational and it could work i feel like that's just trying to be polite to Zoss. okay like to be honest yeah. like if i'm gonna be like for, for at least for the average console player you know, it's not like I'm super high, like, top-tier DPS either, but just average, like, functionality, like, most players, I would say, like, don't beat yourself up about farming in or rushing to it. It's not mm -hmm. anything special. I think... That's basically what I would... Save the time, because I, I did it for you this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and golded it all out and everything. Yeah, JP, you yeah. spent, like, a mil gold, like, trying to gold out that set, didn't you? Oh, like, yeah, it was it it's crazy, because yeah. it was it's jewelry, and then two body pieces... But um, mm -hmm. no, I think I think it might be better on PC to optimize it a little bit better due to the add-ons and you know the situations that they're. It's just I don't know. It but... just doesn't feel good. Maybe it's it is bug though on the dummy. Like you have to do the math. Just you like have to roll. math. It. Did they? Yeah. It's... No. No. Okay. No. I don't think you have to math all your stuff. And I think yeah, I think Goral is still bugged, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Oh. I mean, it is what it is. It's not hey. hard. It's 21, 21 million divided by how many seconds Ex it took you to kill it. Exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's not it's not really bad. Um, it could be worse. I'd rather have that than like you know block not happening. Um, mm. so just the fact that like hey the dummy's not working but there's a run around you know like you could just divide it and get the actual number that shouldn't be bad um one thing that i really liked about the dungeons actually just overall the mechanics the feel of the dungeon um the new dungeons is really cool like when i was going through there with jen and jp um and we we did it with mag daddy steve as well um the first time that i went through there i was tanking it so i mean it's might be a little bit different in a dps perspective but i, I really like the flow of the dungeon i i, I don't know like that's kind of weird but it it flowed very nicely um and i do think scrivener's hall is a lot more um mechanic heavy than the uh balsanar and i uh i do agree with jen like you have to you have to be, you know, communicate because um, we had a pug that <laughs> he left like during the the boss with the book because he stayed like he died. And then we just left him down because JP was just getting all the books. He was going to push the boss. And if you push that boss, like it's you, you get screwed. <laughs> Yeah, each book There's is like a dot mechanic that ticks on yeah. you. We had three books yesterday too, Hans. Yeah, and that was probably fun for you to try to. <laughs> yeah, it's three. it's a lot, and even like you know, I'm sorry that the person left is like a random pug and everything, but there's 
three people left standing and there's a lot going on. One DPS is off getting the book. Mm -hmm. the, the tank is busy holding the boss. The boss teleports. I run and sit, stand in the, the dot that has to be collected. Like, yeah. when somebody goes down there, there's not a lot of opportunity to res somebody. Like, exactly. Down, just wait it out. Like, <laughs> don't think that people are being mean to you. Just wait it out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the tank might be able to go get the res, um, like, mm -hmm. if they'll do, like, a defensive ulti. Because, I mean, you, yeah. you really don't need a horn in that, maybe for the end, you know, to, like, finish off the boss. But, like, during the fight, you really don't need a horn as a tank. Because um, one of the DPS is, like, going off, you know, in, in La La Land, collecting the books. So, there's no... Yeah, at the, at the end, you might... Like you yeah. can push the last. You don't have to do the third that's, book or whatever. You can yeah, just, that's that's that's, like... that's the only time that I would see the horn like going. You know, the tank going for a horn. So you could potentially have the tank pick up somebody. You know, they pop a defensive ulti there, and then they just do it. Um, but yeah, yeah like just just wait it out. Um, the best thing to do is just you know get in chat or even in in text chat. If you're having a problem, just say, hey, like, I don't know this fight. Can I, you know, can I get it explained? Um, but all you really have to do is, like, whenever there's books out, go collect the books. And then, um, you know, go back to the fight. It's... You can see him shoot off the boss, too. Yeah. Like, they pulse. It gives you an idea. It's, it's like fun, the, though. um, the, the... <laughs> you need to self-heal, though. <laughs> like, yeah. I would highly recommend yeah. <laughs> self Definitely take self-heal, self yeah. Yeah. The original mechanics video I watched suggested that the healer go with the DPS. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't work for us. We found that the it, the damage on the tank was much higher than the stuff that the DPS was encountering in the hallways. Um, so we found that it was easier to stay with the tank and let the DPS self-heal them oh. and avoid okay. themselves while they're off in the stacks. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's not bad. No. Like a couple... No. Like a self heal, you should be fine. I mean, I, I we haven't done the hard. Just don't hit yet. a tornado. Don't yeah, hit a don't tornado hit the tornado while, tornado. You're running, while you're running around. Like you come uh, around the corner. No, let's call it by its proper name: a book nato. The book, yeah, the book when you come around, <laughs> no, like when you come around the corner in the library or whatever, make sure there's not something coming at you. Because if you run around the corner really quick trying to get your book or whatever, you're gonna get you might get wrecked by it. Yeah, tornado. those hurt a lot. Yeah, and they, they those like follow a path through the stack. So if you just like wait for it to go by. It's not following you or anything. Yeah, but yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, I mean, I, the last boss is super fun though. The last but, boss can but... be hard too if you don't have like you know people coordinating. You remember that that um, and I mean the so the sword the Savaka type fight. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, mm -hmm. just PSA also like if you're gonna play a heavy attack sword, please put two pets on your bar. Like, <laughs> it's, play it right, folks, um, because it's, you're not doing, an, you're not doing damage at that point, you might as well, like, uh, I don't know, you could just literally heavy attack and pulse your pets and do more damage than what, you know, if you're not doing anything, but, um, yeah, like, the last boss, you have to, um, you have to coordinate on that second, the second room because you have the meteors and then you have the, the two, um, AOEs that you have to separate and then the tank has to freeze the spider. So you have to give the tank enough space in the middle to like go, go through the middle or go around or whatnot. You can't so I don't want to give um, false information just to jump in here, but uh, I actually did come across a video last night mm -hmm. that um, the group hard stacked with their uh, do not move gates oh, and really? laid all three circles right on top of each other and then shared the circle space. So I believe that is a uh, doable mechanic also because when it comes to hard mode, you're going to have less floor space to work with on spread outs. Oh, so right. you can you can stack those? Yeah. Now you don't want to like mess up the stack and have like the edges of one circle like overlapping in the middle of oh, another because okay, okay. where you can where you can stand is very small. Okay. You want the circles like hard overlapped. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I mean in hard mm -hmm. mode you're definitely gonna have to do that. Um, that's what I was about to say. Like we haven't really tried hard mode yet, 
Um, but I'm sure these guys are going to... It doesn't to... look too bad. It's just extra mechanics. Yeah. It's nothing, like... Mm -hmm. I don't think it's too bad. I like the Balsonar, though. Like, I like the puzzles. They, they're they pretty cool. Um, you know, you don't need them. So if you... I like them when your husband's doing them for us. <laughs> it's better. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> you're a knowledgeable puzzle solver, because those can be a little bit of a time consumer. I was watching Merc do them, and I still have no idea how he solved them. I don't understand what the solve pattern is. He he's yeah. he's good at that stuff. Like let's just say that yeah. he is he's very good at that stuff. Um, on the second puzzle with the laser beams, I just stand up on the balcony and I call out which ones are hitting and which ones aren't. I yeah. don't know how to make them hit. <laughs> yeah, we. So, I okay. I do want to say like with mechanic heavy stuff, folks. I, I understand a lot of people don't like to get on mic. But most of the ESL community, if you if you don't want to get on mic, just have a headset on and type, hey, I don't know Max or I'm the first first time in here, whatever. Most people are going to explain it to you. Don't don't be scared to yeah. you know, say you don't know. Because we all start there. We we all don't know at some point, right? <clears throat> I mean, Sorry, I just wanted to put that PC, P yeah, PSA out. Oh, abs Everybody. absolutely. Um, I mean, like, like I said it before too. It's it's okay, you know. Just type I don't know Max, and you know if you're in a group that somebody knows Max, most of the time they're like ninety five percent of the time you're gonna get somebody in there to explain it to you, in one way, shape, or form, and you'll have better. This, I mean, this is a social game in a way when you're doing four man content um as soon as you get that activity finder you're gonna be paired with three other people so you're that's that's social aspect of the game is there yeah in other news um we'll, we'll come back to the uh to the to the halls dungeons real quick um i love the fact that the freaking chains on a DK now taunt, okay? Like Silver Silver Leash does as well. Any, yeah. Any pull. Any <laughs> any pull, like, but I am so happy about that. Uh my backening armor said hold my beer, because that's really fun. <laughs> you don't even need to do anything. Just turn around and let stuff hit you in the back. <laughs> yeah, but it's already taunted. It's so nice. Yeah. Save out some resources with your beckoning armor. Just some... get beckoning armor, like throw a wall to get soft taunt on everything. Make sure everyone's behind you. Turn your back to the stuff behind you and face back towards the group and it just Dude, I some of us too, don't. It's, have a, it's a really nice tight group. It's lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's not that I mean it's not fast. Don't get me wrong. There's a cooldown on beckoning armor. You can chain right. stuff faster, but mm -hmm. it's uh, lazy tank pull in. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't have a crow uh, tank. Um, my tank I'm is like doing DK, other so. stuff. I'm like I'm like parsing and throwing skulls instead of instead of using those like globals for uh, like chaining in like a DK one. I'm just parsing <laughs> and let my other let let my beckoning armor pull everything in and taunt. And I don't have to worry about puncturing either when it comes in. Very nice. Um, we'll do a couple of announcements here real quick, um, and then we'll get back um, to to the uh, to the games. So we have uh, the normal trial weekends. Make sure you guys um, you know check check that out. If you don't have to have an experience or CP is not, you know, you can have five CP or no CP, and you're still going to be welcome. Um, Hades and Ivory will walk you through it. Just sign up on Discord, and um, the Coogie Madness on Sundays. The next, uh, the next one, which is uh, today, uh, as we're getting it, is uh, the Potato Hunt. There's gonna be a Potato Hunt and then a costume contest. And uh, 416 is gonna be Western Skyrim Labyrinthian. 423 is Overland Hide and Seek, and then 430 is gonna be Trivia Night. They are taking a break for Easter, so that's why you guys don't see the Easter weekend on the schedule. Um, everybody got family and such, so have fun and enjoy that with the family. And then I wanted to um, to make a, a special thing. Apparently, um, apparently you have uh, 
the foreskins team. What what did you guys get this weekend, huh? Or this past week? Not this weekend. Or mm-hmm. this past um week. What did you guys get? Last weekend uh, we passed our uh, Stone Garden True Genius, which we worked really hard at. I'm very proud of everybody. So I I wanna give a Kugi shout out to the team Foreskins for getting True Genius, um this uh past week. So congrats. That's that's a hard title to get, guys. Like you've you've been working on it for for a while, right? Mm, not really. <clears throat> like a couple weekends. Yeah, a couple weekends, what? but yeah, it's not um what I was saying, it's not a title you can go like 2 weeks in and like just get it. So um, Oh, yeah, no. no. Yeah, from the from when we started Stone Garden and we went in and we did some uh, just kind of, we call them exposure runs. We, mm-hmm. we go through with just the intent to like plan out some strategies for each pull and like collect up um, mushrooms. Anytime like we, we had time, we would go back and collect the shrooms because we needed a good stock of those. Um, we would plan out like what is our best strategies for pulling the boss. When, when am I good as the healer going to like leave the team and run ahead and like pre-open those side doors. Um, once we were finished exposure runs and we really started pulling, besides like being off because of availability here and there, like it really did only take us like a few weeks to to get like consistent in executes and then like just having like one or two little oopsies to like to getting it. Yeah, I mean, so congrats, to you guys. I know Bolt is uh, he's in Australia right now, so he's he's not here to to get the congrats, but. Um, you know, you guys. I know you guys have been working really hard on that. So we yeah. have a Kiki shout out to Team Foreskins, and then um, and there, yeah, there's there's the video too. If you want to see us, us having a laugh and getting that done, and and some outtakes on uh, how those pulls went, it's all there. <laughs> the outtakes are really funny, actually. Like uh, I yeah. I watched the video the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Anybody that watches that, my name is not re- related to that. That's for me. <laughs> So he says. So he yeah, says. so he says. Although, although I did tell everybody, you get one taunt, so you better kill everything in 15 seconds. That is true. Wait, I don't think I had that clip. That was, uh, that's the rule that Bob only oh, yeah, taunts tell- one. And Bob if, telling if us if the it, rules, yeah. Yeah, if it runs out of ta- timer, it's because we didn't kill it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You guys have a lot of fun in so that he, team. So he says that, and then you have Bolt hitting stuff before stuff's even taunted, too, which was, like, amazing. Yeah, you, yeah, you can see he in the, the first bo- second boss there, the blast bones, and we're yelling at Bob, go, go, go! <laughs> Yeah, Bolt walks in the door and starts already casting his blast bones. He was trying to get a head start on that 15 second taunt timer. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! But um, yeah. I mean, GG. Uh, what What are you guys gonna do? You, have you figured out what you guys are gonna do next, or? Uh, so we have a list of activities that are that are on the table, and we haven't decided yet. Uh, well, Bolt's in Australia. We're just we're taking the time off mm-hmm. and just uh, having fun playing and enjoying the events and stuff, but. Uh, once he's back, we can uh, take a look at what's on the, the journal to-do list and choose the next one. Yeah, Jester's Festival is going on right now. Um, and the the costume, you can roleplay the lizard. It's great. Um, the plushie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dress up like a furry lizard. So that's, that's pretty yeah. awesome. And then the Jubilee is going to be right after this um, as well. So if you have uh, characters that have like daily quests that need to be turned in wait the night before uh don't turn it in wait till the day that the the event starts and then turn that in that way you can get more boxes it's the best event to farm um because you get a jubilee box from doing anything quest related so any quest Mm -hmm. you get a jubilee box um and this is the best time to farm motifs because those yeah, things... goodbye motif sales because yeah. they're gonna be dropping. Yep. Yeah. So if you're gonna, if you have um, some motifs that you need to learn, this is the best event to do it. Um, the Ritz is probably the best way to get um, red boxes. And if you are not, uh, if the crafter that you have is not high enough, and you need to use like iron ingots, get them now before they go up because they will go up during this event. I've seen people selling iron ingot stats for 9k a pop. So, um, either build up those characters or buy ingots now. 
Um, the next Coogie shout out is going to be to Larry D. I know Bob is helping uh, Larry with some of his um, Templar parsing. And he's been doing really good. Um, you know, he's been stepping up a little bit as well in that team to try to get, um, you know, his DPS up. So, you know, thanks, Larry. You're, you're doing a good job, bud. Uh, keep it up. And then the next Kooky shout out is going to be Nature Woman. Um, she got 95K, you know, on, on her blade. It was pretty good parse. Um, and she's, she's going to keep going through it. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, you know, let's, let's get back to, to the, the new Dungies. Um, what about the skin for both of them? It's pretty cool. <clears throat> I know, like you, you had the skin the other day. You had the the. It's like a greenish yeah. skin, right? Yeah, it's, it's cool. A really great yeah. green. I love the pattern mm -hmm. on it. It's a like fun color. Looks it's like great. glow in the dark. It's like glow in the dark. I wish they had um, armor for like kind of like that. Um, that glows in the dark like that. When uh, for like an armor style or something like that. That would that would be pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and. So I, I, one thing I do not like, and I, I know Jen doesn't like, I know Bob doesn't like it, is the, the keys are character bound in Scrivener's Hall. Um, I wish it was account bound, <clears throat> but um, Jen. So unlike the mushrooms in Stone Garden, um, there's enough mushrooms along the way to, to get into the rooms to get the side buff. Mm -hmm. It's all you need, right? Yeah. But with the keys in Scrivenger's Hall, there's only two goblins. So you can only earn two keys per run. And if you want to farm that in order to do the, the hidden boss in the chest room, um, every player in the group needs 12. Well, that means you're going to be in and out of that dungeon a lot of times where you collect that. And you don't always want to play the same tune in there. You want to, you know, move them around. So for that reason, I wish they were if you wanted to save those keys rather than just open your two chests that you want to farm up those keys, you should be able to put them in your bank and then decide, okay, now I have 12. What character do I want to do this on? Exactly. <clears throat> I I really did not like that at all. I, I wish they would have done that, you know, kind of the same with, um, with stone garden where either you had enough keys to unlock that side boss. And then like, um, you have to farm keys, you know, to get the, the mementos and such. Um, that's fine. But, like, the two keys unlock the side boss, basically. And then, or have it to where, you know, you can bank the keys and come back in there and just do that. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm... Yeah, that part was pretty <clears throat> disappointing when, when I first learned, like, because I ran it on my Templar first. Mm -hmm. And then I, I got the two keys. And then I learned that they're character bound. I couldn't put them in my bank. I was like, okay, well... I'm just kind of stuck now. Either I have to like farm 12 on every tune if and like then I'm ready to like run that side boss whenever they want to. That's a lot of work. Like it's like it's almost like you're only going to get all those keys if you're like progging it on the same tune all the time. To, like, <laughs> I know, right? Through those, you know? Yeah, and especially really because cool. like achievements are account wide now. It's like, well, why would you do that? <laughs> like <laughs> that makes no sense. Yeah, Bob, um uh, how how do you? I mean, you don't you don't like that either, do you? <laughs> no, it's it's really disappointing. Yeah, there, there's no need. If I can use if I can get use my dungeon keys to op get shoulders and and whatnot from whatever vendor and whatever tune I'm on, and I can use currency. My currency is account wide. I I don't understand how this currency wouldn't be account wide as well. I that feel like is, it's an oversight, like. They have yeah. thought that through. Yeah, and I mean, I hope they can change it. Um, if if they change it, then I think this is probably one of the best dungeon DLCs they have dropped in a long time. Um, just overall, like the content this year um, has been really good for the game. Um, they... Dude, when that Nick Spider thing in Ball Summoner mm -hmm. like does the Arcanist like channel beam on you. 
That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> like when he like, when he puts that beam on you, yeah. like the Arcanist like stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like oh my gosh, it's so neat. like there's there's and a to lot watch of to watch it hitting the tank and they're just like turtled up blocking and it's like you splashing right into the front of them mm -hmm. and like obviously the healer has to give them heavy heals through that and. It's just it's a, it's a very cool visual. I'm telling you, like yes. this is this is um this is the best dungeon DLC that I've seen it drop, um in a long time, um if if ever, I'm excited. Like these dungeons look really nice. Yeah. The storyline is nice, and other than the whole key thing in uh, Scriveners, this is an A plus from me. You know, one hundred. Yeah, Ball Sumner would be like amazing if it wasn't paired in the same DLC mm -hmm. as Scrivener. Like, yeah. if it was in another DLC, it would be we'd be talking about it more. It's 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 really cool. Well, let's like, take a second but... too to uh, bring up that in Ball Sumner, the Right Master set. Um, it wasn't really talked about too much on PC. Nobody had really said much, but uh, it gives the heroism tether. Ma minor yeah. yeah yeah and so we tested that out and making it work is on the janky side um what the game counts is direct heals um uh, first of all the person has to have like needed a heal it's not on overhealing so you kind of have to like not lay hots and stuff to allow people to start taking damage in order for it to hit somebody um next th is the fact that sometimes you know this ability procced it and then it didn't proc it again the next time so i think the game might be having an issue on what it's considering a direct heal like did did you heal that person was it a direct skill that ticked on them um and then lastly the beam is uh the visual is really hard to see with with ever because it's a short beam uh and you're in a group you're tight balled up and the there's people's skills going off everywhere. It's it's very hard to find the beam and like to position yourself so it's so it's hitting people because it's it's just bare it's lost in the visuals. So I wish they would uh maybe do something about that and make the, the proc proc easier to control when you use it. Yeah, I think I think if yeah. you could if you could see the tether a little bit clearer, um and if there was like specific abilities that triggered it. Um, rather than, you know, this ability here, this ability there. It's no, it's like inconsistent. It's yeah. Like, it's like bug. Like sometimes the direct heal will like proc it from like, and we counted the cooldown with Jen and I had the stopwatch out yesterday and we're literally oh. like had it on a stopwatch. <laughs> so like, yeah, it is, it's not like, oh, we just missed it and it was on cooldown. Like it is literally like bugged. Like sometimes like. Healthy offering would proc it, and sometimes healthy offering wouldn't proc it. <laughs> it just however it felt. And yeah. yes, I was taking damage the whole time, standing in like a world boss, literally like letting it beat on me. So, so it's so you guys think it is? It is just bugged. Period. It's bugged. It's, it's the game. Yeah. Like none of, none of the tool tips on a healer say this is an AOE heal. Mm. This is a direct heal. Exactly. So you have to play with your skills to find out what are my direct skills that are going to proc this. So I was I was testing it on my Nightblade. I could I still need to go through other tunes and see what else um, procs it. But we tried the healthy offering. We tried um, combat prayer. Um, um, I'm forgetting the name right now. Like the the Nightblade's like kind of inhale breath, AOE. Yeah, um, which is crazy. Yeah. That which thing was setting that, it that, off. Which that, that counts. Because yeah, that one was setting it off, which was strange. Sap essence, right? Um, yeah, sap, sap essence, essence would proc it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So you sap were essence. you were healing yourself, and it was proc. And it was procing allies. allies. Yeah. No, the morph. No, the morph heals allies too. Oh, the no, morph. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, so sap essence would proc it occasionally, where healthy offering, which is technically like a direct heal, right? When you look in the direction, that was like inconsistent. And then yeah. combat prayer would proc it all the time. So obviously it's kind of buggy. Like, it, yeah, Sap Essence was procking it, which is weird. Yeah. I didn't think I would have. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. Like, even technically, like, a heavy on a resto should proc it, right? Yeah. Because, like, that yeah. that yeah. an ally. Yeah. But that wouldn't set it off either. Yeah. So, I'm, so weird. it just might be bugged. Um, that's, I haven't seen anything. 
I haven't I seen think anything. That, yeah, online. I think that could be a really fun set to play with as long as like they fix, you know, what is what is a direct heal and can you consistently yep. set it off when you want to. Yeah, I mean, I I do like that. Um, I do like that. And I know JP and I were talking about, um, <clears throat> like if we were to utilize that with Pillager, um, the the crows, you know, would have to the crows and I guess somebody else will have to wear a War Machine or a Master Architect, and then just kind of let Roaring and Jarvolds stay away from the group. Because, to be honest, um, I was a little bit hesitant about Jervolds leaving the group. But after I thought about it a little bit more, I was like, well, if you don't have Roaring and you have Pillager in the group, you really don't need Jervolds. You can, you know, the Jervolds horn's really nice. But if you have Pillager, you're going to be doing horns a lot more often. So it's not even needed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, and the rate at which the horn is right. going to yeah, go ahead. And it. Yeah. You have faster shit, so like, you you really don't need it. Um, so you could potentially put a DPS, and uh, Pillager, and you know that right master set, and then the other healer could uh, could be in SPC PA, um, and just have some fun with it. Um, oh, the other the other thing too, I wanted to mention about like the light attack damage and stuff. Like, in actual content for, like, probably 99.9% .9 of the groups that play this game, especially on console, it's actually, I think, stronger. Like, yeah. hear me out on this one. You, the only way before, like, um, prior to the, the change that you were hitting, like, your maximum light attack damage was with, like, the horn buff, like, the 10% mm -hmm. resource, because I think you had to be at 35k resource and 7.5k weapon and spell damage. Yep. Okay, so th that's the only way you were hitting it. But now <laughs> you're hitting it way sooner, like as Skinny Cheeks pointed out. Um, but the perspective of like the average console team or whatever, your horn times with that buff aren't like as good as they are on PC anyways. So I actually think it's an overall gain, like technically speaking, for the average group's play pattern. Like you will like see pushes, you push like, I don't know, we had a poll in like, what was it on on Yon Deer Bob and it was like in freaking oh, yeah. insane like Duh. like yeah because because we could push to the execute quicker and mm -hmm. then also the ramping with the uh, bloodthirsty as well how they changed the scaling yep. on that so everything's like more front loaded now like in fights you hit your max light attack damage a lot quicker and like the bloodthirsty changed the way it scales at the top end it's not it's not as uh. It's not as strong as like it's the same but it ramps up a lot quicker now so the mid fight like mid part of the fight it, i noticed a huge difference this week and it's like it's pretty crazy actually it's really nice like yeah yeah it, like makes execute classes stronger too because you're pushing through that groggy like mid part of the fight where you know they're waiting like blades or templars are waiting to use their execute well you push through that faster so it, I think it I think it kind of changes things a little bit if you think about like big picture. I don't know. Do you notice that too, Bob? Like it's, it's like Oh crazy. yeah, for sure. Especially with the the big thing with the bloodthirsty too with it being front loaded now. Like you you're getting a whole lot more weapon and spell damage early on in the fight to push through that stuff so much faster and get to that execute. Um mm -hmm. like it it, it doesn't Honestly, it, it it really doesn't feel like they changed anything. Yeah. Like if anything, in content, I think we actually probably do more damage actually in content. We other, will. You in know, practice. compared yep. to you know compared to to the dummy. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it... I think so too. Like the parses aren't that bad. Like, I don't know. It's people it's to... people looking at the parses but not looking at the actual content. And saying, you know, hey, you know, we we got we got yep. we got faster um, in content, but the dummy got you know uh, calmed down a little 2K bit. Two K different, yeah. Three K different, you know, it's not. But you're you know, you're not... getting five K, like for example, you're getting five K overall, like better in content. Um, oh, it's not even that bad. I think so... RPT, what he said, his like DK parse was like one K off, yeah, and yeah. he's, he's pretty consistent. 
Well, DK is really consistent to parse out, and he's really mm-hmm. consistent. So I, I would take that, take it for you. So 1K difference on the dummy, but in actual content, you're ramping all your damage up like way quicker. Mm-hmm. I'll be curious. We didn't run this week, but what you watch like it's going to change the pace a little bit with like chill team, and it did like in our, on his team on the DB prog, we had a couple of like crazy like Yandir pulls where like we were like, wait, what? He he's jumping. It's like 20 something percent, like which is. You know, probably five or six percent ahead of where we normally like perform at on the regular. Like, honestly, it's it, we'll see. It'll be exciting, actually. So don't let anyone get frustrated about like, I don't know. It's hard for people to understand when you see stuff from like PC content creators. They're literally talking about the point zero 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 two percent of the people that yep. play this yep. game overall in the world. But yeah. for everyone else, uh, I would and and guess what? They'll still achieve what they want to do anyway. So don't. All, I don't want any of this like sentiment of like update 35 the way that everyone cried and oh. didn't left the game like don't guys trust me and actual content I know it's hard for some people to see it because you're not in consistent groups but when you play in consistent groups you pretty much perform the same way every time you'll notice it that it's not even like a big deal it's not an issue least... it's actually mm-hmm. better um yep it will be yep after update 35. Especially in four man, in four man too, because like you don't get, you definitely have way less four and up time in that. So like in mm-hmm. four man stuff, it's going to be even better to hit your, you're going to be hitting your max stat on your light attacks, like in four man content too as well. So just all balancing. They actually are doing what they intended. Like they are making the game more accessible without making it like super easy either outside of like what heavy attack sorts are doing. Like, you know, like, it's pretty i think it's, i think it's pretty balanced right now actually well the the problem with heavy attack sork is that people don't know how to play it correctly either like for example well they don't do max yeah. they also don't do max i mean yeah like, but like, it's always the heavy attack sork that doesn't do the max <laughs> like in scrivener's hall those are group. like it, it is every it really single it time. is it is but y- you should also know how to set up your heavy attack sork and, um, yeah, I think in all the pugs we ran this weekend, like, you know, there was the three of us queuing together, and the pug we got, like, every single time was a heavy attack sword. And yeah. there was probably one that actually could play it correctly, and the rest of them were just, uh, okay, I can do that. That's that's what I don't like about it. People can hide behind it, and they're not actually doing, and it's just given that they're going to be pretty good DPS. They hide behind the build itself. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. There's people that can play it at a really high oh, yeah. level, a higher level. Exactly. You know? exactly. Like, look at the sure. Zyno. Even when he plays his, like, two-boy heavy attack, he's still, what people don't understand is, like, he's still playing that at a super high level to do what he does. Like, you can't just, like, slap the stuff on and, 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 and be expect. like, oh, okay, here we go. Or that guy that was heavy attacking with no pets. Literally, all he was doing was heavy attacking. Yep. Like, without even pets on his sword. That's probably yeah, there was, like, like no skills happening at all Mm-mm. we're just like no. what's on your bar like what are you doing <laughs> yeah i was wondering that too because i was like what what is in well, this yeah, guy's bar people... so like what i'm saying is like for people that don't aren't as astute to what's going on as we are um you know he would pass right he just because it's acceptable now to see the lightning heavy attack it's not like oh man or whatever but he's like people can just hide behind the the build now and it, that's the thing that i don't like about it yeah bob's so just... bob's uh real life you know has has hindered us this weekend damn it bob <laughs> darn it bob <laughs> we had to well bolt's going away too merc's not around so because um you know bolt's in vacation and then merc's at work so and bob's working too and you know with his family and we have to pug we have to pug because of bob Bob is all your fault. What are we? It's not that bad, but just observations, you know, what you notice. Yeah, I mean, first week into the patch. Um, one one uh, last thing before we wrap this up. Um, what are um, we'll we'll go around the the table here, and what are um, what is one thing uh, or a couple things that you would want to see changed? And um, you know, if you don't want to see anything changed, then that's fine too. But um, Bob, we'll start with you. Keys are the big thing for me. Like the the keys for the new dungeons, they they need to be, they need to be account. Don't don't hide them behind one one tune. Um, but I mean that's 
I mean, for a patch, that's that's pretty minor. Yeah. But that's really the only thing that I yeah. got. <laughs> that's that's impressive, actually. But um, JP, what what do you think? Okay, so I just thought of this. I like the goblins <laughs> in Scrivener's Hall. I want open world goblins that run around. Like that okay, would be cool. so fun. Well, it's like overland gear, just a new thing. Yeah. Just add them into the open world. They like, sound goblins the wand- everywhere. Try to <laughs> so the, wand- the the wandering world bosses were very cool, you know, with Galen and stuff. But yeah. like, and with uh, the other one, I I'm bad with my names. The other the other uh, DLC area Deadlands, but yeah. uh, like let's get some wandering like just that sense of like. Even though you know they're there, you know there's one in each section, so it's kind of like scripted. It's still really fun to chase those little buggers around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it, it just really is. It's so fun. So you want like, to I add want more the, of that. the goblins to the overlands, just period, right? Yeah, that'd be fun. That would like, be cool. Have, like, like, or like a quest line where you chase them from like delve to delve. That'd be really cool too. <laughs> JP, I'm just saying, if you want to chase goblins, I still have the achievement in my journal to chase down a hundred of those in the sewers. <laughs> oh, really? They're in there, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, where the they get. Trevor Trove, go, goblins. Yeah, I'm sure that's it's, that's where you get the haiku, Joe. Uh, the haiku, yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah, oh. yeah. Yep. Well, you can buy. I think you can buy the hot cages too um, through Telvar. You can, but um, yeah, you, you can. But yeah, you but get them. them. You get them from those little buggers. Um, like you have to parse those things, though. Mm-hmm. They like yeah. the they ones in the sewers away. get away. If you don't lock them down, they they yeah. get away from you and they, they disappear. Still get away. Well, oh really? Yeah. yeah. No, these ones, like the ones in Scriveners, are cool though. How they just like run all over the place and stuff. They're actually kind of. I was like, it's cool actually. And they do mechanics. They put their little fire totem up and stuff. The and fire's not you. a joke. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah, it'll kill you. I tried to... I got in a group, and, like, the group didn't want to do them, and they, like, went ahead. I was in a random pug, and I, I chased one around for, like, literally two minutes while they were off, like, doing other stuff. I thought I was going to get kicked, but I, like, really wanted that large key. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> Chasing that around in the in Skibner's Hall. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, Jen, what about you? What, what do you think? So I definitely agree with Bob. The the keys need to be account wide. Building on what JP said, if we're gonna have the uh, the goblins, the treasure goblins that run around, I would like to see some world chests that can have a chance to spawn a world boss. <laughs> Wait, what? Like a chest? Yeah. Yeah. If you go, if you see a chest out there and like you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go and grab that and like surprise, surprise, like you oh, can an get ad that. comes out. <laughs> Yeah, oh, like great. a mimic chest? Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's some in the sewers too. That, um, that would so show the trolls that, like, you know, you're fighting ads because you just found a, a chest, but there was like ads that you had to like battle first, so you couldn't open it. And that person always runs up behind you and like steals the chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there. That would show fun. them. <laughs> there, there yeah. are some, uh, some of those mimic chests. Um, in imperial city i know they have them in there so something like that yeah that would be cool jen just to have that like in the in the open world yeah it's like surprise Uh (laughs) (laughs) yeah surprise no loot this time yep um Um, other than that yeah the uh the the right master said i would love to see like a better visual on that beam and a consistent uh way to apply it yeah it might it might just be bug jen um yeah you know especially if you guys tested it like immensely like you did, you know, with the stopwatch and such, it just might be bugged. So, yeah. um, that might be something that, um, Katana's in the forums, so I might just have her say something about it in the forums. Um, yeah. but uh, for me, I agree with you and Bob, the keys. Um, and I really do like the little goblin idea, um, the, the overland goblins and then the, the mimic chest. But Jen, when you kill the chest, like when you kill the, the stuff in the, in the, um, that comes out of the chest, the chest goes back, you know, like a regular chest and then you can loot it. So mm-hmm. I, I really do, uh, think or like, yeah, whatever, like horrific thing came out of it, you'll get the loot. Off yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um that that's actually pretty cool um overall like i'm super happy with the way the direction the eso is going um i know a lot of people are you know moaning about the new crate with the polymorph but come on guys they have to make money okay like calm down 
8K. I'm sure they've made a ton of money. I everywhere I see, I see people wearing this Fallen Order yeah. more in zone. I was so happy with the DLC. Rounds. It made me want to give them more yeah. money and buy that, exactly. that package. Like exactly. I, I normally don't buy crowns ever, but I was like, mm, that thing's cool to get the polymorph like included with it mm -hmm. and quite a few crates. I was like, you know what? They did a really good job with this, so yeah. I'm gonna buy. It's 25. I mean, too. It's people always say like the the crates are a gamble you're gambling if you're going to get anything good at least this time they included a guaranteed exactly something that exactly. somebody wanted you know and if you yeah. if you think about it the crates um 5k crates has 15 crates okay this is 25 for 8k so you're basically getting halfway into the next set of crates with a polymorph think about it from like the cost of like how much crates are and such um, my only gripe is I wish the in-game achievement stuff was like better, but yeah, whatever. that's what a lot of people are, are complaining about. But you guys, I mean, you do have to give the people that want to spend some money in the game a little bit, you know, nice costumes and such. Um, I think if they make the end game content a little bit better as far as look and what such. What if you can buy them? There you go. That's a win-win for everybody. What? Example. You, you can buy the DB totem, but if you actually have, like, similar, but if you've actually done the DB achievement, you can modify it and, like, combine it and make, like, a super. So it's unique. So you still have something oh, really cool okay. from, like, yeah, and then you cause us all of us in-game people to, like, go and, like, modify our in-game skins with, like, crates. And then, like, then they could just make money always or all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> Change that, your purple that... skin to, like, a metallic gl glow with a crown achievement but you have to have the purple skin but you could still offer like the cool ones like just like the crowns would upgrade basically the end game skins and achievements mm. and make them cool like the just the straight crown crate stuff because so, most of the skins you buy from crown crates look a lot nicer than most of the mm -hmm. stuff in game so imagine if you had a modifier that you could buy in a crown store but you had to have the the skin from the content end game there that's the best of both worlds i want to be able to make my purple skin glow brighter or something <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool idea though huh bob speaking of stuff to spend money on what? i was thinking if they want more money out of my pocket i think i should be able to like change the color of the accessories on my mount at a uh um outfit station oh yes yes i do remember you you mentioning that jen um yeah and i mean that, that changed that... the saddle color yeah. changed like the harness colors that would be cool and then you can still have it tied into where like uh because you you know you have to do certain achievements and such for for certain colors so you could still mm -hmm. do that you could still have that you know if you haven't done this achievement to get you know the the uh i know the pvp black is really nice uh if you haven't done that then you know you can't dye the mount black or whatever you know yeah so that would be cool. yeah i'm not saying like dyed them out because obviously those skins on the mounts is like what they make like that's no they but make the but the what? yeah the the, but harness. the accessories on them yeah, yeah. so if like yeah. you know you're trying to like saddle, fashion scroll a little bag. bit and you want to match like yeah. the saddle yeah hmm. well some cool ideas um to to end this um this month's podcast um thank you guys for coming in um you know uh having a little round table and uh thanks everybody for for listening um make sure that uh you guys check our youtube out uh subscribe and and such um and we have uh we have discord guys that uh that would love to uh get uh boosted so that would be cool but uh yeah thanks everybody for um for hearing watching whatever and uh have a good day hello hello